Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazek, and I'm here today with part one of our video series on the Illinois State Constitution, looking at some state history and overview. So Illinois was originally settled by groups of indigenous peoples. Now, these were Native American tribes. There were a large number of Native American tribes who settled throughout Illinois. Some examples include the Illiniwak, Peoria, and Sauk tribes, but there were many, many other groups of Native Americans who settled in Illinois early on. Now, the first European country to claim Illinois for its own was France. Now, two French explorers named Jacques Marquette and Louis Joliet explored the Illinois Territory in 1673, and then after they had made their original settlement, there were many more French Canadians who would come south to settle along the Mississippi River in the years that followed. So originally, Illinois was French land, and it would remain a French territory until 1763 when it was given to the British after Great Britain had defeated France in the Seven Years' War. Now, the Seven Years' War was a worldwide conflict in North America. It's often called the French and Indian War, uh, but this was the war that actually brought the Illinois Territory into the hands of Great Britain. Now, after Great Britain had taken it from France, there were not very many British settlers who would move here because an act of the British king at this time was to reserve the land that had been gained from France for the Native Americans who were already living on it. So, Illinois was still largely an unsettled and empty area around this time leading up to the American Revolution. Now, at the end of the Revolutionary War and the United States taking all of the land in North America from Great Britain in 1783, Illinois would become part of the Northwest Territory in 1787. This was a large span of territory uh, that covered much of the Great Lakes region. So we're talking about uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois. You can see in the map at the top right. And then in 1809, the U.S. government would create the Illinois Territory, which you can see in the map in the bottom right. Uh, the Illinois Territory would include all of Illinois, Wisconsin, and also parts of Minnesota and Michigan. So at this point, we have the Illinois Territory. There are a lot of states who are joining the Union, and Illinois would become one of those states relatively quickly after the founding of the Illinois Territory. Now, during the debates on granting Illinois its statehood, there was a dispute over where the state's northern border should lie. Now, the original law would have granted Illinois only 10 miles of shoreline along Lake Michigan. But a delegate from Illinois named Nathaniel Pope wanted to push the border farther north. He wanted to get more shoreline along Lake Michigan because he saw it as an opportunity for development of the Illinois Territory. And the final bill that Congress would pass did just this, and it would push the final border of Illinois north by an additional 50 miles. And what this did was it would add roughly 8,500 square miles to the state, which would increase Illinois' size by 17%. Now that's a big, big chunk of the state that originally was not going to be part of the Illinois Territory. And then on December 3rd, 1818, Illinois was granted statehood and it was the 21st state to join the Union. So you can see here in this map, the yellow area of Illinois was the original proposed territory and you can see all of that area in blue above it was not meant to be part of Illinois. But thanks to Nathaniel Pope and other delegates who pushed for the border being moved north, you can see all of that extra land that was added to Illinois when it was granted statehood. Now, Illinois has had three state capitals in its history. The original capital was Kaskaskia, which you can see is down in the southwest portion of the state right along the border with Missouri. Kaskaskia was the capital of Illinois from 1818 to 1820, and then it would be replaced by Vandalia, which would act as the capital of Illinois from 1820 to 1839. 
And then in 1839, the capital was moved to Springfield. And all of you hopefully remember that Springfield is still Illinois' capital to this day. Now, the main reason that Springfield was named the new capital of Illinois was because it's closer to the state's geographic center. You can see that in the map of Illinois, Springfield is really close to dead center in the state. Um, and that was one of the driving reasons behind moving the capital from Vandalia into Springfield. Now, Illinois is bordered by five states. They are uh, in counterclockwise order. Wisconsin, which is the state north of Illinois. We have Iowa, which is to the west of Illinois. We have Missouri, which borders Illinois to the south and west. Then Kentucky, which borders Illinois to the south and east. And then finally, we have Indiana. So those are the five states that border Illinois. Now in addition to those five states, Illinois is also bordered by three rivers and one lake. Uh, first of all, and most famously, we have the Mississippi River, which is outlined there in blue, and you can see that the Mississippi River runs down Illinois' entire western border. Uh, then we have the Ohio River, which is shown down at the bottom in green. The Ohio River runs along the southern tip of Illinois and some of that southeastern border. And then finally, we have the Wabash River, which is outlined there in purple, which helps create the border between Illinois and Indiana for about maybe 25% of Illinois' eastern border. And then finally, up at the very top right corner, we have Lake Michigan, which is obviously one of the Great Lakes, and Illinois has about 60 miles of Lake Michigan shoreline on its northeastern border. So those are the four bodies of water that border the state of Illinois. Now let's talk a little bit about Illinois' government. So Illinois has had four state constitutions. Uh, the current state constitution was approved in 1970. And the Illinois state government has three branches, just like the federal government. We have the legislative branch, which introduces and passes legislation that involves state policy and administration. We have the executive branch, which controls the state budget and reports to the General Assembly on conditions of the state. And then finally, we have the judicial branch, which interprets the Illinois Constitution and laws and also conducts trials uh, from time to time as well. Now, the legislative branch in Illinois is called the General Assembly, and the General Assembly has two houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Exactly like the federal government, where Congress is divided into a House of Representatives and Senate, in Illinois, the General Assembly is the exact same way. And there's a picture of the Illinois State House uh, from Springfield. Now, the executive branch is headed by the governor. And the judicial branch is headed by the Illinois State Supreme Court. Again, just like the judicial branch of the federal government being headed by the Supreme Court in Illinois, the judicial branch is headed by the Illinois State Supreme Court. And there is a picture of the uh, Supreme Court building that is down in Springfield as well. Now, the Illinois Constitution begins with a preamble. Uh, you'll probably, hopefully, remember that the federal constitution also begins with a preamble. And a preamble is an introduction that sets out the purposes for the constitution. And in the Illinois constitution, some of the purposes include providing health, safety, and welfare of the people, maintaining a representative and orderly government, eliminating poverty and inequality, assuring legal, social, and economic justice, ensuring domestic tranquility, and providing for the common defense. So a lot of the same things that the preamble of the federal constitution lays out uh, are also included in the Illinois State Constitution. Now, Article 1 of the Illinois Constitution is known as the Bill of Rights. You probably remember that the first 10 amendments of the federal constitution are known as the Bill of Rights. In the Illinois Constitution, it is Article 1. And so what Article 1 does is it protects the individual rights of the people of Illinois. And some of the rights that are protected by this article include religious freedom, freedom of speech, the right to assemble and petition, crime victims' rights, no discrimination against the handicapped, also no discrimination based on gender, and also trial by jury. There are some other rights that are also protected by Article 1, 
Um, and if you go and look through the actual Illinois State Constitution, you can see all of the additional rights that are protected by the Bill of Rights. Now, Article 2 of the Illinois Constitution discusses the powers of the state, which includes the separation of powers and powers of the government. So just which branch has what authority in the state of Illinois. And then Article 3 of the Constitution discusses suffrage and elections. And suffrage is just another name for the right to vote. So Article 3 gives an overview of exactly who has the right to vote and the qualifications to vote in Illinois. Now these three qualifications that are required to vote in Illinois are you must be 18 years old, you must be a permanent resident of Illinois for at least 30 days before the election, and you must be a United States citizen. So those are the three qualifications required to vote in Illinois. Now there are two ways that you can amend the Illinois Constitution. First of all, it can be amended by a bill proposed in the General Assembly, in which case three-fifths of the members in both houses have to vote to amend, or it can be amended at a constitutional convention. Now these don't happen all that often, but if they do, the same rule applies. Three-fifths of the members in both the House and the Senate have to vote to amend the Illinois Constitution. Now here are just some state facts about Illinois. Illinois contains 102 counties. There are 18 districts in Illinois that send representatives to the United States House of Representatives. We in Indian Creek live in Illinois 16th Congressional District. Illinois has 118 representative districts for the Illinois House of Representatives. Of those 118, Indian Creek is in the 90th representative district of Illinois. And then Illinois has 59 legislative districts for the Illinois Senate. So you can see that two of the House representative districts are combined into one Senate district because 59 is half of 118. Now of those 59 districts, Indian Creek is in the 45th Illinois legislative district. Just important things to keep in mind, especially in the future when you're voting which districts you live in, obviously, so you know which candidates to pay attention to. Now, the state motto of Illinois is State Sovereignty National Union, and you can see there on the state flag uh, on the red ribbon that the eagle is carrying in its beak contain the four words of the state motto. Our state slogan is the Land of Lincoln, and the state nickname of Illinois is the Prairie State. Now, our congressional representative from the Illinois 16th is a man named Adam Kinzinger. The two senators from Illinois are Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth. The current governor of Illinois is Bruce Rauner, and his lieutenant governor is Evelyn Sanguinetti. Uh, Illinois' current secretary of state is Jesse White, and our current attorney general is Lisa Madigan. Now, our state senator from the 45th district is a man named Tim Bivens. And our state representative from the 90th district is a man named Tom Demmer. So for our state senator and state rep, you can just remember Tim and Tom. Uh, the other ones you'll probably have to remember individually. Now there are four United States presidents who have lived in Illinois at some point in their lives, and you can probably guess uh, hopefully all four of them. First of all, Abraham Lincoln. He moved to Illinois in 1830 when he was 21. He was a state representative and an Illinois representative before he became president. Ulysses S. Grant moved to Galena in 1860 when he was 38. Ronald Reagan was actually born in Dixon, Illinois in 1911. He graduated from Eureka College in Eureka, and he would live in Illinois until he graduated in 1932. And then finally and most recently, Barack Obama, who moved to Chicago in 1985, and he was an Illinois state senator and United States senator before he was elected president in 2008. Now here are some of Illinois state symbols, uh, including our state amphibian, which is the eastern tiger salamander. We have our state animal, which is the white-tailed deer. State bird is the cardinal, and our state flower is the violet. We also have our state fish, which is the bluegill. State insect is the monarch butterfly. Our state reptile is the painted turtle. State snack food is popcorn, and our state tree is the white oak. Uh, but that's all I have for you in this video. I will be back soon with another one on the Illinois State Constitution. And until then, this has been Professor Blazek, and I will see you next time.